Amen. 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 I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm happy to be among the youth again. Speak this evening to all our youth. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Have enough Amen. time. I just want us to welcome the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in our midst. Let's close our eyes and begin to tell the Lord. We are here, oh Father. We are here, oh Son. Holy Ghost, we are here. Come and take control. Hallelujah. We are here, oh Father. We are here, oh Son. Holy Ghost, we are here. Come and take control. Jesus, we are here again. We are here, O oh Lord. Our Lord and King, we are here. Come and take control over our lives. We are here, O oh Father. We are here, O oh Son. Holy Ghost, we are here. Come and take control. We love you, Lord. 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 Lord Jesus Christ, we love you, Lord. Jesus, we love you, Lord, we love you, oh, we love you, Lord. Our Lord, we love you, Lord, we love you. Jesus, we love you, Lord. Holy God, we love you, Lord. Oh, we love you, Lord. We worship you this very moment. We worship you. Jesus, we worship you with all our heart. We worship you. Holy God, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. Son of God, we worship you. Oh, we worship you, we worship you. Begin to worship the Lord, tell the Lord to bless you as you hear the word of God. Open your mouth and begin to appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of God. I worship you, Lord. Now we worship you, Lord. We bless you. Thank you, worship of this. Thank you, I am. I am. We bless you, Lord. We respond to the glory of Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We worship 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 you, Lord. I say you are welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm so happy to see all our youth. And I'm so grateful that God is keeping all of you safe. 
uh, anywhere you are, I know you are safe, no corona, nothing, because you are covered in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all in Jesus' name. So today my topic is blame yourself if you miss heaven. Blame yourself if you miss heaven. Hallelujah. Today in the world we are living is upside down. Things are not standing well in the way of God. If you talk about the society is polluted. Family lives are activities of sinful. The life of the family Clever is man. not righteous, is not holy. Check the families in the world today, you will not see any godliness in it. When you go to the schools, you see pollution, sinful practices everywhere, in the university, everywhere. Come to the church where you expect the lights to shine. It is smelling and stinking with sin and evil practices. This is the world we are in today, and this is the state of the world today. Sin is everywhere in Europe, in America, in Asia, in Africa, every part of Africa. Sin is everywhere. Everywhere in the world, in the internet, in, at the news, you listen to news, anywhere, walking on the road, you see sin in different form. The world is colorful and is giving pleasure to the world, offering different kind of things to the world, to damning souls. People that are going to abroad, oh, it's looking nice, it's colorful, oh, everybody wants to be in abroad, oh, the country is nice, oh, but when you are there, you know what you need there. You come to Africa, oh, Africa is free, it's cool, ah, Africa is nice, everything. But all these things you are seeing outward, many souls have been sinking in this world. The world today is a sinking sand. Many souls are sinking, many youths are sinking. And when they are sinking, they are descending to hell because they follow the colorfulness of the world, the pleasure of the world, the beautifulness of the world. Say, oh, the world is very nice, it's very beautiful, very sweet. But they didn't know that it's a sinking sand. And many have sinked today, they have sunk and gone into hell and they are regretting their life today. The love the world is giving is a fake love. Many people have rejected Christ, the, the new love, the true love, and have gone to the world to like fake world. They are looking for love, boyfriend, all these things, all to please their flesh. They have gone into different lifestyle. But they didn't know that this world give it out. What is the world is giving is fake love. It's not real love. The world, the money the world is giving today is a is a money of blood. It's a bloody money. Many people are abandoning the things of God to get the genuine money, the fake, the the, 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 world, the, the riches of Christ. They are going into the worldly way, and what Satan can offer to them is bloody money. Some have gone and joined Illuminati. Many youth have gone to join Illuminati. Some have joined secret society. Some have joined many, many things. Youth just to get the worldly money. And the worldly money is a bloody money. Satan will make you to pay with your blood, with your soul. So many youths today have down their soul. Many today have down their soul. And many that are working in the world today, they didn't know that they have missed it already. With all the zeal they are playing in the church, if you go to different churches today, you see 
the youth are the one playing the music, they are singing, they are doing evangelism, they are the media, they are walking, but they didn't know that they are standing on the sinking sand. But I want to tell you, that's why I, I topic this message today, blame yourself if you miss heaven. I am talking to holy youth, which I believe you are. I'm talking to holy more youth, holiness of our movement youth. This place where we are, we should be grateful. We should be grateful. We should be grateful that we are lucky, privileged to know this truth. All the, all the holiness children in the world, not only in Horimo, I want to tell them that you are lucky. You are lucky at the time we are now in to know this truth, to know the way to heaven, to know what it means to miss heaven. None of you in this movement that have been in Horimo we say that I don't know what it means to make heaven, or if I do this, it will take me to hell. You and I know the doctrine. You and I know the doctrine that will take us to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of you, God has brought you through many ways to know this truth. You are privileged. You are privileged like me. I am so grateful to God for the Lord to locate me for, for so many years. I will say like eight years ago, located me in my poor country and brought me to Horimo. And I'm so grateful because I've known the truth. I've known the truth. And if I miss heaven, God forbid, I will not blame anybody. You will not blame anybody. The only more youth in America will not blame anybody. The only more youth in Europe will not blame anybody. The only more youth in Asia will not blame anybody. The only more youth in Africa, East Africa, West Africa, South Africa, you will not blame anybody. Hallelujah. We are lucky to know this truth. One of the privileges is God has given us a father that knows the truth. That the Rika know the truth. He know the word. He's teaching us the truth. The truth that will save us. The holiness standard that will take us to heaven. And this truth, many of us have been grinded in it. You and I, you can be, you can even teach some of our youth. If they go to other church, they can preach one or other pastors. Because you have been grounded in the world where you know the truth. You know the truth. Somebody will not deceive you. You are ahead of many youths in the world today. You are ahead of many Christians in the world today. Some of you have been praying to know this truth. It was through prayer God located you and directed you to somewhere called Holiness of Our Movement. Some of you is through the CD, through the messages in the internet. I want to see, I want you to know the privilege you have, the blessing you have. Just see how many billions of souls that are in the world and many millions of souls that are always on the internet. They have not come across holiness of our movement yet. They have not come across holy messages yet. Some have listened to Sister Linda, have come across all remote, but the spirit to believe was not given to them. They doubted it. But what makes you? My brother, my sister looking at me, what makes you to believe when you hear the testimony? What makes you to believe when you listen to the Adirika message? What makes you to believe that truly God is in this movement? You should be sitting and saying, what, what is so special in me that in the whole world I am today? The Bible says many are called, few are chosen. I am among the few today that know this truth. You should be grateful. You should be thanking God. You should be sober. Thanking God is a great privilege. But many of you, youth, they don't know this privilege you have found. It is a great privilege. You are in a university. 
Take a look around and see your friends. Just tell them that here is a scene. It's like you are bringing down the, the whole university down. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. It is not true. Come on here. In. You will see that they don't have the knowledge. The power to know the truth. You should be thanking God that God, thank you. I have known the truth. So that's why I'm saying if you, bl you blame yourself, if you miss heaven, don't blame your coordinator. Don't blame your parents. Don't blame your friends. Don't blame Sister Linda. Don't blame Daddy Rika. Blame yourself. Anyone in this movement and Miss Heaven, blame yourself. We have the total truth, complete word of God here. There are some churches that will tell you that I have never heard about restitution. Some churches will tell you that I never knew that Joel is a sin. Some churches will tell you that, oh, oh, oh I never know that I have to be sanctified, that this anger is taking me to hell. I thought that uh, if by grace we are going to heaven. But you here in Horimo, you know all these truths. You know it. They have preached it. You have heard it. You know it. Youth, you know what will take youth to hell. You know what will take youth to hell. We are lucky in Horimo. I want you to appreciate this thing we are. We are God has given to us the true word of God that will save any souls that want to make heaven. We are so lucky that God is approving our Father in the Lord every day that this is my son. I am speaking through him, listening to him. All the word is telling you, you are privileged. There are many people after the rapture or before the rapture or when they die, when the Lord will tell them that this man of God, I sent him and you did not listen to it, they'll be crying. They'll be even saying, why I have a neighbor that was a horrible member, a youth in my university. She was a horrible member, but this youth was not emphasizing it, was not telling me the quality of this place, was not expanding, giving me the knowledge. Some of your friends will be angry with you because you have known the truth. You have known the truth. Jesus directly in this movement is the one helping us directly. God himself is the one speaking, telling us. Is it revelation? The wonder of God that if somebody comes in with evil, is that before you think God will expose the person? You will surprise, you will be surprised. Ah, if it's not revelation, how will you know that this person is like this? God is speaking to us here. God is giving us messages. The word that convicted the man is here. You will, even witches and wizards, when they hear that they make a message, some of them they will go and be crying because the word, the power to be to, 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 to have the new salvation is here. You can be in other churches for how many years? You will continue to fornicate. Pastor will talk to the power to hate fornication is not in the church. The power to, to, to expose sin for where is not there. But here, many youths, the first time they step their feet in Horimo, in the campground for youth conference, many confess things that their parents have known for more than four or five years. If this some 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 say. My parents don't know anything about me. My church, I was attending, they don't know anything. This is the first time Omelina, I'm telling you, this is who I am. I've joined cult. I'm a witch, openly like this. I don't want to go again to the marine. Please, I need prayer. Please, ma, please, I want to make, I want to go to heaven. I never know hellfire is like this. I don't want to sin again. My parents thought that I'm a virgin, but I'm not a virgin. My parents thought that I'm doing, I'm going to school, but I'm not in the school. I've joined cults. I'm this. It is here. Because why? God has given us the word. The word that saves. Or we more have the word that will save. We have it here. We have it here. The undiluted messages of God. Something that is no mix. Something that you will not be seeing clearly. And this way, Daddy, they preach like this. It's like that. Is, is it true that Yari? It is not like that. It is not where your pastor says, Yari is a sin and, and, 
and he or she is not giving you the scriptural backing for you to see. But in one more year, everything about scriptural backing about jewelry is a sin. Perfume is a sin. Attachment is a sin. Makeup is a sin. Boyfriend business is a sin. Smoking, drinking, and all. All the sinful things, restitution, don't cover sin, don't confess our sin. People say, no, but when you go to God, just need that and say, God have mercy. The Bible, in more and more, they are showing us everything that we need to do. How to get married, the right way of getting married, that you will not defy your home. Before you get married as a youth, how your home will be holy and blameless from God. How you should abstain from all appearance of evil. How you should live a life from stage one, from the day you say, I want to marry till you till they don't marry. How you will live a blameless courtship. We know it here in horrible. But other thoughts, you see them now on Facebook. They have not even married yet. They are just giving souvenir. They have begun to kiss, hold themselves, hold themselves like this, pause in the Facebook and be telling you, um uh, April 20, we are going to on the Mr. and Mrs. This. You will see them on the Facebook. You will ask, ah, these people are they couple? They say, no, you don't see. They wanted to get married. The, the next two weeks they'll be getting married, but they have started hugging themselves, started kissing themselves. Started, you are seeing it now on Facebook. Are you not seeing it? And these are people that believe they are going to heaven. But you and I know that no heaven for them. They have defied themselves before marriage. They have been talking secretly on the phone, midnight talk. They will talk. In fact, making love over phone. They find themselves. God is not in their marriage. The Bible has told us that the, the bed undefined. Your body should be blameless. Don't be talking with your boyfriend. You say, hey, we want to marry my fiance. You started talking love talk, sex talk, this, that. But in Holy Moya, you have the fear of God. You don't do things like that. Somebody wants to marry you. You know where you should go. Go to the marriage community. You don't talk and play and mess up yourself before you come into the altar. That's why I say, if you are in Holy Moor and you are a holy youth, blame yourself if you miss heaven. Blame yourself. Don't go and blame anybody. Don't say hey, they were not teaching it, they were not hurting on us in Holy Moor. They were not. Yeah, we have not seen churches where they give us assignment as if we are going for competition. Assignment upon assignment. Prayer assignment. I've not seen churches like that will be saying, this year we'll be going for prayers. Women read this book. Like, who care about who is reading Bible or not? The pastor care about that one. But yeah, Daddy Rika, God is giving him all the strategy how we should be keeping ourselves warm. This assignment we are doing, this prayer we are praying, many people are testifying, including me here city. Prayer life is reviving. We are reading the books. When you want to when you want to go weak or go sluggish like this, one book you read like this will say, Hey, hey, Father, show me mercy. You are alert. This assignment is to keep us alert because Satan used to pollute the air to make Christians to be sleep, kill our prayer, our ex our spiritual exercise. No prayer, no fasting. Some youths from January to December, they can count the, the time they pass, maybe three times in the year. I remember I fasted. I think January I did my last fasting. That is it. In other in other churches, go and meet them. Who is fasting? Some are fasting. They are fasting for hundred days. It's for boyfriend to marry them. No heaven in mind. So we that are in holy more, we should be grateful. We should be grateful to God. Turn to me. Why I say you should be grateful? Matthew chapter thirteen. The book of Matthew chapter 13, from verse 1 to 23. We are grateful. In this ministry, God is calling us friends. He's not hiding secret to us. He's not speaking to us in parables. He's making it plain to us because we are like his disciples, the choosing vessel, the wise virgin, the holy, the holy, the holy virgins. The ones that are going to welcome Jesus is coming for a holy church. We are part of those people. Matthew chapter 13.
Then same day when Jesus went out the house and sat by the seaside, and a great multitude were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he saw some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Verse 5, some fell upon stones, stony places where they have not much earth, and for which they sprung up because they have no deep, deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were choked, and because they have no roots, they wither away, and fell, and some fell among tongues, and the tongues sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good grounds and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, and some sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. When Jesus spake this word, it was saying in parables, it was not coming out clearly. See what the, the, the disciple did in verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou into them, unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mystery of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. To you, holiness revival movement youth, to you, God has given us the mystery to know the kingdom of heaven. Some of you are the one teaching your parents. They have, been a, they have been a Christian for how many years? But now you are the one telling them, mommy, daddy, this Christianity you are doing, you are not going to heaven. You are doing Christianity, you are drinking alcohol, you are lying, you are mommy, you are fighting. You say, when did you start going to tell mommy I've known the mystery? You, when you will be quoting scripture today, they say, eh, hey, hey, this my, this baby, this my child. When, when did I give back to this child? Now she's the one quoting, she's the one telling me. Because God has given you power in all and all. All the sober children of God, the God-fearing one, the sanctify youth, you have power. There are some of you, if you, be, if you open church, I'm telling you, people will surprise. So I ask you, did you go to Bible school? No. This is what Jesus is saying. Verse 12. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, for him shall be taken away, even as he hath. Therefore, I speak to them in parables, because they, they see, see not, and hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. Many Christian, many youths, Christian youths, Christian youth choir, pastor children, bishop son, bishop daughter, prophet and prophetess, their children, many, they are seen, their eyes are open like this, but they are blind spiritually. You are more better than them. You know more than them. More than even their father, the prophet or the prophet. Those ones that have big, big checks, that have money, riches. I want to tell you, as I'm seeing you like this, my brother and my sister, what you have learned, what they have taught us in Holy more, what you have known in this ministry, you are privileged, you are blessed. It is a great thing for you. I want you to see what you have in your hand now, in your possession. The knowledge you have gotten about Christ, about heaven, the mystery about the kingdom of heaven. I want you to jealously protect it, guide it. Don't play with it. Satan will want you to make that, to tell you that you are suffering. See your own Christianity. Other youth are enjoying. See that they are getting married, they are traveling. You who is coming for you. You finish your master, you don't have a job because of the kind of Christianity. I want to tell you, Satan just want to discourage you so that you can't be fools like the many. Because you know what you have gotten, what you have known is more better than this married, the rich man in the world, having the debt, having jeep, travel to America is more than that. Because what you have now is for living forever. But those ones that don't have it, they are in the dying world. This world is called dying world. This world we are in, we will die one day. And we are we are transiting to the place called the land of the living, where you will not die. And you are going to the land of the living, you don't have visa to go there. You are, you are, you are, you are sorrowful. Pity those ones that don't have this privilege. You are, you are privileged. You are, you are lucky. 
I want you to have, just see yourself treasure. When you are walking as a child of God, you dress holy, no seductive dressing. You cover yourself well. As a, as a boy, you don't have a friend. Your friend will say, are you sure you don't have a friend? I say, yeah, be proud of it. Tell them that I don't sin. I don't commit sin. I don't have a friend. I don't have feeling in my heart for women until I'm ready to get married. People say, are you in this world? Are you sure a fine boy like you? See this fine girl is saying he wants you. You are saying you don't want. Don't be sitting down. Be sorrowful. Be gracious. Because the grace that you have to overcome sin, many don't have it. Many pastors have been fasting and praying, but they don't have that power to be holy. They don't have that power. God has not given to them because they are carnal. They are following Jesus for something, for miracle. These people that are following Jesus, when he was going up and down, they were following him for just miracle. You know, Jesus knew now. That's why he was busy. So why am I wasting my time to be talking deep tea to them? Let me just be giving them parable and keep their time. And after I finish, I heal those that will heal like God. But to the disciple, he give them attention. He told them. And in verse 14, and, and in them, he fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, by hearing, they, they hear, they shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing, ye shall see, and shall not perceive. This is the world today. That is the contention we are having. That's why many people hate her more. Because what we are speaking here, what we are saying here, the doctrine we are teaching here, many churches are angry with her more, especially like Sister Linda. Many pastors want to kill me because they, they, they have eyes, but they're not seeing. They can hear, they cannot, they cannot, they cannot hear, they cannot perceive. It's a mystery we are speaking here. Some people will say that the Dika is just speaking revelation, revelation. They don't know the value of this revelation. They don't know what it means for God to give revelation. Without revelation, my people perish for lack of knowledge. They don't know anything. If they accept revelation in their church, they will know that they, they, the choir minister is singing a leg down his outfit and up his human being. They will run away. But they don't know. How will, they, how will they know when they don't accept God? But here, God is full. The Godhead is full here. We know how Trinity works. We know who is Jesus, who is the Father. We know the Holy Spirit. We know what they do. We know how they work. We know how they're together. We are privileged. We are privileged here, my brother, my sister. We are privileged. Verse 15, for these people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are full of hear, hearing, and their ears and their eyes they have closed. This is the world we are in. Even to your family members, your brothers, your sister, are you not seeing them? How many years you have been talking to them? Instead, they will be telling you, we are pitying you. We are pitying you. Here you are looking old. Who married you? You are the youngest in our family. You don't wear your little put on makeup. You don't, you are, you are pity you. Brother, holy, holy, you are inside your thirty. Why will you get married? They think that you are suffering. You should not be appreciating God, say God, in my entire family. We are more than 12. We are more than seven. Only me know this truth. In my entire relation with my, my friends, my friends outside the school, we are more than how many? in the classroom, only me dressing holy. Father, I thank you. Thank you for helping me to know the truth. That is what you should be doing. That you are sitting and murmuring, or you are sitting and asking questions, or you are starting getting tired of the holiness doctrine, or you are now started compromising the holiness. You started thinking that maybe I'm doing too much. I want to tell you, I pity you. If you play with salvation and learning in them, you will not blame nobody. Because what will you tell God? God, I didn't know that a uh, uh, boyfriend business is sin. Is that what you are going to tell God? God, I didn't know that uh, makeup was a sin. Is that what you are going to tell God? God, I didn't know that uh, uh, anger was a sin. Is that what you are going to tell God? What will you tell God or a moment? Because God will ask you, what do you want to tell me? Everything you know, everything, the mystery 
of the kingdom of heaven, how to go to heaven, the life you should live to go to heaven, the life you should abstain that you will not take you to heaven. I have revealed everything to you people. My son, Pastor Rika, your coordinators have taught you people everything. In fact, you used to hear it in, in youth conference. My daughter has been crying every day before you people. You don't go to hell. This is Alinda has been preaching, telling you people that I have come here. I saw this. What a horrible member if you die and go to hell. Tell me what will you say? What will you say? Verse 16, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. That is the blessing you have. That is the blessing you have. I'm talking to the youth that are still holding on to holiness. They are still standing no matter what. Those that are passing through persecution, those that have believed in holiness and say, this doctrine, I will follow it, I will do it. Come rain, come sun, come whatever. Even if it's death, I will not give up. I will even trade my marriage. If, 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 if God wants me, I will not even care if I want to get married or not. A young youth will say, you know what? My, if a husband comes, praise the Lord. Husband did not come, praise the Lord. What I know is that this holiness, I will not play with. That is what you should be doing. Because you are a blessed child. Verse 16, but blessed are your ears for they hear. For they, blessed are your eyes for they see. And your ears for they hear. You don't have an eye alone. It is also blessed to have a good eye that you can see well. My brothers, my sisters, all our youths who are blessed. For verily I said unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Now Jesus was telling them, this is the meaning of what I was saying. It will sprung up. It do like this, the best of the hair, the fowl of the hair. Who is the fowl? Satan. Now you make it clear to them. Because to you now you are my friends. You are not closer to me. You have decided to follow me. Peter said, to whom can we go? You have the word, the internal word is in your mouth. When the other disciples are going, let them go. We cannot go anywhere, Jesus. So because of the hard desire that this is the man that has the internal word in his, in his mouth, where can we go, Lord? You are our Lord. You are our God. They accept Jesus. They believe it's what because they have not. The Father sees in Jerusalem in, a, in their time cannot preach the way Jesus is preaching. This man is full of wisdom. This man is doing practical signs and wonder. The disciples, they were wise. They give their time to study and observe Jesus. And then they come, they come to a, com a conclusion that this is our Lord. And then automatically, Jesus now says, you are my friends. I don't need to hide anything to, from you people again. The mystery of heaven, I need to reveal it to you. This is what we have decided in Horimo. You and I know that we have decided to follow Jesus. You and I know that all of us, we are worldly people. Those days, we are Jezebelic. But today, we have decided, some of us, our family members, many of them are not happy with us. Our best friends that we have still friends for how many years? They are hating us. They are persecuting us. Some of us, they have turned our name to call witches and wizards. Since Alina is a snake, it's a snake, it's a snake. Because of what? Only this truth I am preaching. Because God give me eyes. that when I see evil people, I, I expose their sin. They will hate us. I don't have friends. Because of holiness, you too, you are suffering. Some of you from your parents, they are persecuting you. We will not help you. If you don't, if you don't dress well, if you don't do this, there's a girl in Nenuba, I know, that the mother says she will show me the naked kind of dress. Say, mommy, I will not do. Leave my house. Leave my house. She's suffering because of this truth. So because of this suffering we are going to for Christ, we have now told God that Jesus, we are ready for it. That's why in all remote, it's revealing everything to us. This is one of the secrets. Other churches, they're not ready to leave their sin. Even the pastor will tell you that, no, God did not come in to preach holiness. They are with God reveal the mystery of heaven to them. They are just, they are just guessing. When they are preaching, they are guessing. Okay, my preacher, they may be, uh, it will, they don't know it. Because they did not give God the free way to rule their churches. 
to rule their life. The pastor did not give his life to Jesus. You have heard that the leader, I have suffered for this gospel. Suffer. Since he was small, he made a covenant that the youth, every youth, where you are thinking of uh, finishing your university, what is in their head is how to get a good job, make money. They'll be telling God, I want to work first. After I get money, then I will now begin to think of how I'm going to ministry. But the leader was in his uh, second year in the school, or sec second or third year, as he told us the story. He took an oath to God and said, God, if I finish here, I will go full time. I will serve you in full time, not even to go and walk and come to church. I will be in the church. And the church is not a church. That time people are like, what did they have? When he was telling us the story, when the parents had that they want to go into church, which church deeper like they started crying. Because that time deeper life. If, where you are coming, you are coming as a soldier. You don't expect money. Not that you are going to win us where they will pay you 100, 200. No, deeper life is you are coming as a disciple that want to suffer for Christ. They started crying. How can I train in the school as an accountant? And now you finish. We are now the family now. So Paul will start working and be bringing money. Now he's still good. But see what he suffer for Christ. And today, God is recommending him. The blessing is following him. And today, this man, if he died by the grace of God, anything that happened to him, Jesus said, okay, come home now. Heaven. Even the president of America cannot compare his blessing with the because if he be then he will go to hell. He will regret why did he follow Satan? What is the benefit in it? So to you, it's a privilege, my sister, my brother. Maybe you that joined us yesterday, or you have joined us five years ago, you are still standing, and now you want to start shaking. Wake up! Don't backslide. Or you are now inside your 30, 35. You are a woman, you say, hey, I'm passing my age, who wants me? And that Satan has started using that to torment you. And now you are being tormented. You, are, you, are, you can't pray again, you can't fast again. You started asking questions of God, why my life is like this? I rebuke that spirit in you in Jesus' name. Mm. Appreciate what you have. The first thing you should be thanking God every day. God, thank you for making me to know this truth. That's me as I'm here like this. I don't lie. I don't fornicate. I don't commit sin. I don't do anything every day in my life. I pray. I fast. God, I study the Bible. I know. I see vision. I see revelation. Hey, Jesus, I thank you. Oh, Papa, I thank you. I say, youth like this, youth that we are worldly like this. By this, I should be in the night club. By this, I should have boyfriend. By this, I should be changing my phone. By this, I should be having money. Boys are sending money. Men, married men. But God, see me now. I don't have anything at church. I don't have any boyfriend. My hands is clean. I don't have debt. Those days, I have to be borrowing money and uh, borrowing money to buy attachment. I can't pass in this road because I, I trust uh, Mama Paul money to buy attachment. Money. But today I'm free. I sleep well. I wake up well. Oh God, I thank you. Hey, that is what you should be thanking God. That you are there complaining for vanity upon vanity. God, I've finished my education, no job. Father, why my life is like this? You say, if I give my life to you, so you give your life to Jesus for property, but right? you gave your life to Jesus for what you would give a yeah, benefit from him. Well, if you are like that, sorry, heaven is far away from you. You have to give your life to Jesus for heaven and get heaven from Jesus. Hallelujah. That is what you should do. That is what you should do. But there are many youths in this movement. We have started hearing and started seeing how you have started playing with your, with your Christian life. We are seeing the pictures on Facebook. Some of you, your skirts have started going up your knee. Incomplete holiness. Some of you, your dressing has started being seductive, very tight, long down. You think you are doing us back? You think you are doing that in back? Or you are you are saying, ah, they were Melinda was saying Jesus is coming. The rafters are not in the You are doing yourself. You will not blame anybody if you miss heaven. This topic is for you. You that you have started compromising your friendship with that brother, your friendship with that sister. You have started doing things that you, your conscience is telling, why are you people hiding? You have started bringing boyfriend and girlfriend business. 
this place is very holy. We cannot take it. Every day we pray. Me, I pray that they take a pray. Other children of God, I know they pray. We pray, Father, don't allow anybody to defy this ministry. Anybody, be youth, be a child, be woman, be coordinator, be whoever. Father, expose them, remove them. Because we, we are grateful. Me, I'm very grateful. I don't have anywhere to go to. No church again. Where will they keep me in this faith? If I was in another denomination, I'm telling you, Sister Lina should be in past glory. If I was not in this movement, under a man of God like this, that will be putting eye on us, that will be putting on, on, on putting us on exercise, constant conference, program, prayer. Please, some of you that have come to the camera and stay for two, three days in the camera, maybe one, two weeks, you have known now. Some people say, Daddy, password is prayer. You can't say around that you don't pray. If he's in a room we are talking to and laughing, we don't send text. You people should turn that, that talking you now into prayer. Why are you people talking too much? So you are around this kind of person, you make heaven. Because his own mind is thinking about heaven, keeping people. The workers in the camp, check them. In the morning, they do prayer as if they are going for crusade. They will go for devotion, prayer, prayer. How many hours they are doing devotion? Workers, oh. In other office, where they go, we want to, in the, the Lord is our Papa, we thank you for the day to so take over. They go, some they even pray. But yeah, the workers, they pray more than one to, they preach to them complete message before they serve, before they start going to work activities. Because we, in this place, God has told us that, yeah, it's like the barracks that people are saved from the war outside. So, boys, if you are in this place and you are playing, you are playing with your Christian life. You don't fast. You don't pray. You don't do the assignment. Some of you, it's only one time you did your assignment, they give you gifts. From them, you don't, you say, I'm doing master, I'm doing degree, I'm doing uh, what? You don't have time, you are too busy. You are not even, you are not even bothered. Your, your mind is not, hey, since, since 2016, I, 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 I joined you to collect price. Since that time, no time again to finish my assignment. I want to tell you, Satan is laughing at you. Satan is laughing at you. You don't fast. There are many people here, you are playing, many, some of the youth are playing smartness with holy and righteous lifestyle. You are doing smartness. You think you are smart. You can deceive us, but you can't deceive God. Some of you have started putting perfume on, uh, perfume on your body. Started putting a powder on your face. You put it slightly so that people will not know. In your day of wedding, you are putting little with it. I pity some of you. When I used to see some picture on Facebook, I just shake it. I just pity some of you. You are playing. You started doing fashion. You are posing. You started showing your bonbon in the picture. You are started playing with salvation. If you miss heaven, don't blame anybody in Horimo. In Horimo, you go to hell. Ah, you will cry. You will cry. You will cry because you yourself will say, God, what happened? You will ask yourself, why did I do this? People in hell will be confessing. I never know that lying is a sin. God, I never know. Father, that dreary was a sin. My pastor did not tell me. Jesus, are you what will you be shouting here? What will you be shouting here? Others are shouting their ignorance. You what, what will you be shouting? You will not be shouting. You'll be you'll be beating yourself. Why did I behave so stupid? Why did I play better? I know everything. What, what will you be doing? So if you miss heaven, don't blame anybody. Don't cry out Pastor Rika's name in hell. Don't cry out my name. Don't cry out your mother's name. Don't cry with your coordinator's name and say they were the one causing me to sin. They were the one making me to be angry. Don't, don't call your other friends, your, your holiness friend's name and say they were the one, they were the one. Don't call their name. It's you because... The key of your life is in your hand. It's you that choose to throw the key away. It's you. You play with fashion. All this tight-fitting business, can't just it. Youths, 
these are the things that I used to enter. Energy, talking. You bring laziness into this world. You have not been lazy. Spiritual, laziness to spiritual exercise. No assignment. You can't pray. You can't fast. No quiet time. Don't listen to message. Evangelism, you are not there. Chapter meeting, you go once in a while. Come for conference. Maybe if we see, if we see you one year, it will take five years before you, you think of coming again. You are not bothered. Your heart is not there. What you are pursuing now is uh, uh, my, my education, uh, my this, my that, my that. Please, these are the little foxes that will make you to miss heaven. Don't be deceived by, I'm a member of Holy Mom. I'm a member of Satan will give you a name and then eat your, your spiritual life. Salvation is personal. Walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. It is not that I just go and join a movement or join a ministry and say, because I'm busy in this ministry, I'll go to heaven. No, you have to walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. So take away laziness. This corona time make you to be lazy all the time you're on phone and what you are looking on the phone, you sit down, what you walk so Facebook, chatting, three hour, four hour. And when you come to God, you begin to sleep. Let me tell you, the Bible says, God says, I'm a jealous God. You give Facebook three hour, four hour. When you come to me to read Bible and this, you give God 30 minutes. We should be changing. We should be serious. Because these are the little, little things that will sweep you off your leg before you think, bam, you are fall down. Hey, what happened to brother? They say, that brother. They say, guess what? They were rushing to hospital, you have died. And if you go to go, what would you tell God? Eh? It has reached a point in some of you in your life, you are carefree to all sinful traits in your life. Losting is in you now. Before you don't have lost it. Now lost it have taken over you. And you are not even bothered to pray, to ask for God to remove it. You are not even bothered to look for, for cancer. Anger have taken over you. They cancel you, you are shouting. Your, your, your fellow youth know that you have anger. They don't talk to you. You are, you are, you are very angry. You shout. People fear you. Say, ah, we never know that brother. This can be angry. Ah, but that brother was very gentle. Those days when we came to Orimon 2013, they say, ah, me today, I'm seeing him. Now, little T is very angry. My brother, Max Lillian, I've taken over you. And if you don't get that out of your life, you will learn in hell and you will not blame anybody because you know anger is a sin. How do you allow anger to rule your life for how many years? Now, the anger of ruling your life that is so prominent that your friends around you, your people have known that your church members, even chapter leaders, know that this brother is full of anger. Gossip, you have taken over your mouth. Gossip have taken over. Before you don't gossip. Before when somebody calls you, want to gossip, you say, Sister, please, 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 please. I don't like this. We, don't, we should not talk about this. Let's change the topic. But now you see that laugh and be talking and be gossiping. It is evil. Masturbation, you don't even pray again, you don't rebuke it again. When the thing comes, you do it. That fear that was in you those years is not there again. If you play with those things, you learn in hell. You will not blame anybody. Pride has come into it. Some youth are very proud. You think you are great. Let me tell you, these are all the foxes that will learn into hell. Evil thought. Now your mind is full of evil thoughts, evil thoughts, evil thoughts, sinful thoughts, fornication, masturbation, adultery, evil thoughts, fill your mind, love of money. I want to hammer. I want to hammer. You want to go and hammer. You are not thinking, uh, you know, this holiness. I'm a musician. Let me put small only pity. This. I want to hammer. I want to make money. You know, this is my cause. I, I have to just go out. You are just thinking evil thoughts, sinful thoughts as fill your mind. And you say you're a holy youth. You are just camouflaging us. You are with us. Your soul have gone. Satan has kidnapped you. I want to tell you if you don't play, if you don't rise up and capture your soul back and command your soul out of the hand of Satan, you learn in hell. You will not blame anybody. You will not blame us. 
We are doing our best. We are praying God give us the message. Children of God are praying God give, give us more messages here. And daddy every day is teaching, coordinators are teaching, even you, you are hearing. So please, incomplete holy dressing. Please, these foxes that have come into your spiritual life, this seductive dressing, this tight fitting gown, tight fitting skirt, who told you to go back to those vomits? You want to go back to Egypt for the garlic and the cucumber? Who told you to start barbing your hair and be putting a, a line on it? You have started leaving your beers because now the fashion now, people are leaving their beers. I'm the grown up man. Why are you doing that? You have started putting mark on your hair, shave, copy your hair, giving mark on your hair. You have started bleaching. Why are you bleaching? Why are you bleaching? Why are you bleaching? You started putting styling gel on your hair in front. Some of you, we are seeing you people. We can't go and hit you. We can't beat you. God forbid. We just pray that God, this person has started going back. But if you careless your life, you're on your own. Some of you have gone into the spirit of carefree towards sinful trace in your life. You have lost it, as I was saying, anger, gossip, masturbation, pride, high-mindedness, evil thought, evil counsel. Some of you now in Orimo, you don't call us again for counsel. You call your friends. It's what they cancel you. Youth canceling youth. Blind lead the blind. That's why some of you are doing mistakes in your life now. It's your friends now they are canceling you. You don't call spiritual fathers, spiritual mothers. My life is like this. I'm doing this. I don't know what is taking over me. I, my heart is like this now, mommy. Daddy, please, I need prayer. You are busy casting your friends. Please, if you notice those things in your life, this how many years ago, two years ago, one year ago, and you know those days where you join Ramon Newly, where you hear the message, when God spoke to you over in a dream and said, join them. When God give you revelation, with some of you, you saw her life. You say, I listened to the testimony. I had a dream. You say, you are so afraid. You, you are frightened. But now, compare that time to now. If the Lord come, are you going to be bold to stand before him? Are you going to be bold? Are you doing secret fornication? Some of you have gone back to your old boyfriend. You commit two, three sins and cover it. Or you have started talking, talking, talking. And you know the brother you like talking to truly in your heart. You love this brother. You don't know how to tell the brother that I love you. Go to carry my name now to Valley for me too. But you are just busy calling the brother every day. Brother, how are you? We did not see for me today. How are you? Then, sister, how are you? This that are lost. You know. And as we don't know, God see your heart. And if you don't pray against that loss and get it out of your way and abstain from that sister and brother, if you learn in hell, you will not blame us. You will not blame us. Don't blame anybody, anybody in more that land in hell. Don't blame anybody. Blame yourself. Don't say my coordinator used to oppress me. Don't say uh, 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 Pastor Lika is not telling me all, all, all the messages. Don't say I used to come on Medina is not because I'm very angry. That's why I left all the more. Don't say this holiness that somebody, not only you, you blame yourself. Blame yourself. You are a witch. Or a wizard. Wizard, wizard, a youth, you are inside witchcraft, and you say you are holy more. You are spending how many years in holy more with all this? This year, you are hearing the word of God that they are telling you witches will eat their flesh in hell, wizard will suffer in hell. You are still hiding in your heart, you are still working for Satan. You think what we are saying is a play? Oh, Father, you will cry, you will, your cry will not have end. You will suffer. You will regret why you waste this privilege. Even some witches and wisdom will be telling you that I wish I would have known this truth. Maybe I would have repent. But you as a witch or a wizard, you've been only more for four years, eight years. Some of you started, you are around the dedicate. Now around the coordinator, just to bring them down. 
and you say, yes, we are holy. When I listen, but you know you are agents of darkness. You are playing with this truth bar. You will not blame anybody. Even God, you will not blame. Because God will say, I know you are a wizard, you are a wizard, which you are working in the ministry. I allow you to continue your, manipul your manipulation in my ministry. But I was keeping you there so that at least you have common sense. As you are hearing the word that this one fighting for Satan now, see you now in hell. So you that you are hearing me, any one of you that you are a witch or a wizard, and you have been in that thing for years, or you, you have started seeing yourself joining them, and you are so afraid not to confess. You started seeing yourself flying. Now you have started seeing yourself in the water. Every time they will come and call you. Fear will not allow you to confess it. If you cover it, you will learn in hell. You will not blame us. Because we have told you in, in our remote that no witches and wizards will make hell. No witches and wizards find yourself. You will not make heaven. No witches and wizards will make heaven. You will not make it to. You are just wasting your time. If you confess and forsake it, the mercy will come upon you. You will be delivered from the hands of Satan. But if you keep on playing and keep acting, making camouflage Christianity, watermelon policy, inside is red, outside is green, you are doing yourself. Watermelon Christianity, you are doing yourself. You will go to hell. You will burn. The fire will burn you. Your, it will burn your body. Every part of you will burn. And the burn, it don't have end. It is not for one year. It's not for two years. You will burn in hell for some years. God will bring you out. And then do final judging. And then gather hell and throw all of you into a lake of fire. We are brings, bring stones will be melting you. You will melt like like plastic bag or ladder and reform again its continuity. What shall it profit you? Why are you playing with your salvation? Why are you playing with this place where you are? Many people are out there. They are paying millions in their church, tight and offering. They are worshiping pastor. You are seeing on Facebook when they are lying on ground, pastor is his martyr. They thought that this is the man of God. They're in the right place. By the time they come to know this truth, that they have been wasting their money, their energy is the fake place. Some will be crying. Some will want to go mad. But you, God have saved you and brought you to this place. And you want to play with it? You want to play with your salvation? Don't play with it. Other youths that have died that are in the age, the age mate of you now, I am telling you, they died because they went to hell because they were in the wrong touch that listened to the wrong gospel. Many youths in hell, they are crying because if they will have heard this truth, like maybe their church telling the truth, some will have changed. They will not have gone to hell. They would have repented like how you did. But because the church they found themselves, was just preaching false doctrine, lying to them, and they die and go to hell. Some because of worldly friends. If they would have gotten a godly friend like you, they would have gone to heaven. But you, since you know this, to tell me which friend in this meeting you are coming, you are coming for every time youth conference. How many of you have been bringing new person, your friend in the university, your working class friend? Have you been persuading and say, please now just join us in one of our youth conference? No, selfish Christians, selfishness. Let me come and hear for myself. We are not fruitful. Some that I held today is because of their bad parents. They were having bad parents. The home was full of alcohol, smoking, mommy and daddy, they are fighting, no love, nothing. And they don't know the truth and then they die and go to hell. For you, many of our youth in this movement, your parents are in Horimo. They know this truth. They are teaching you. Some of you, your parents are even coordinators. Your aunties are women leaders. Your brothers are inside the movement. Your entire family. Tell me if you miss heaven now, what would you say? What would you say? Will you go and say, God, because my parents were not born again? What will you say? What will you say? And today, if you see them, some that are in here, they were beautiful more than you, some were armed some more than you, 
Some they were richer more than you. Some they were more intelligent more than you. Some you know they would that have died. They in the in the college they came out with honors, distinction, but they died and go to hell. Why? Because they don't know the truth. Just because they don't know the truth, not because they were stupid, not because they were not they, they were not wise, not because they were they were not uh, intelligent. No, because they don't know the truth that takes to heaven, the matters of kingdom, the holy life. They don't know how to live a holy life in this world. For you, you know to live a holy life. How you will put education and holiness. How you will do holiness and marriage. How you will do holiness and childbearing. How you will do holiness and business. How you will do holiness and single life. Everything you know in this movement, how to live holy in every area of life. If you are single, they, 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 are, they have taught you how to live a single life till you get married. When you marry, now we are going to do marriage conference. You will see how they are teaching women how to live a life with a holy, with a unbelieving husband. How you will package your life very well that you make heaven. So no, no youth, no coordinator, no man, no woman in this ministry, no child that will die for more man go to hell and say it's because we are not having a complete gospel. So be careful. Be careful. Everything you need to know to go to heaven, they have taught us here. Seek for it. Go for it. Read the books. Practice it in your life. Listen to messages. Download it in your phone. Don't wait for new one. I have listened to this. The word of God don't get old. Some of you say, I have listened to this. I have not listened. You are not serious. If you have read the Bible, you will not read it again. Because the Bible is what we are using every day. How many years people have been using it to preach? The word of God don't get old. Practice this thing. Because let me end up telling you if you miss heaven, let's turn to Leviticus chapter 26. Book of Leviticus chapter 26. If you disobey God, what God will do to you? You that you have had the truth in all the more. You have had what it takes to take, go to heaven. If you hear all this thing and then you disobey God, and then you disobey God, hey, oh, my sister, it will be so terrible for you. It will be terrible for you if you disobey God. Leviticus chapter 26, from verse 13 to 19. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. God is telling you, I was the, I'm the one that brought you out of Egypt. That your sinful life, that your life that you were living, that today you are testifying that if I would have died four years, I would have gone to her. Thank God I come to Orimo. Thank God I listened to Momilina's testimony. Thank God I listened to the Rika message. Thank God somebody gave me Orimo book. Thank God I listened to. This is the God that is telling you now that your past life, it was Egyptian life. That is what he's telling you. That ye should not be their own maid. And I have broken the bounds of your yoke and made you go upright. Those days you were under Satan. You were a slave to Satan. You were a slave to sin. You were a slave to your boyfriend beating you, cheating on you. You were a slave to, to your lecturers. You were a slave to sin. But God has delivered you. And verse 14, see what he said. But if you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, all these things we are teaching you, live holy, speak holy, dress holy, think holy, do everything in holiness. Even when you are dealing with sinners, deal with them righteously, holy. Don't say they are sinners. Don't you, you deal with them righteously. Obey your parents, even if they are not born again. We are teaching you people here. That is the commandment, commandment of God that will take people to heaven. And if ye shall despise my statue, <laughs> the standard of God, the standard of God, or if your soul abhor my judgment, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, conception, and the burning you that should consume 
the eyes and cast sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They, they that hate you shall reign over you, and ye, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. Your life will just be foolishness, rubbish. You will start seeing suffering from this world. The witches and wizards you are binding, they will be matching you. Oppression, affliction will be your, your, your cup of tea. If you, this truth that you have had, that don't put, don't, don't, don't put the cup, don't lie, don't steal, don't have anger, don't masturbate. If you hear all this truth, and then you, you decided to close your eyes and go back to see and compromise the standard, the Lord face will be torn away from you. And if God face torn away from you, my sister, my brother, Satan will turn you punch him back. Because Satan will know that you were, when you were with God, you suffer him. Now you are with Jesus. All your prayer, prayer, you don't know you are hammering Satan. If you leave the presence of God, Satan will punish you. Sickness will not depart from you. Suffering upon suffering till you enter hell. He said in verse 18, and if ye will not yet for all this here akin unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sin. And I will break the pride of your power. And I will make your heaven an iron and your heart a brass. Let me tell you, you will suffer. You will suffer if you don't obey this God. If you don't if you don't stop to follow Satan, you will suffer. Matthew 25, you will suffer. This is where you will end up. Matthew 25 and 30, we are running up now. Matthew 25 and 30, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. You are unprofitable. Since you know this truth, you are not truth, you are not, you are not bringing fruit. You are not proud of it. You are not thanking God. You are not thankful. You are not appreciative. Oh God, I thank you. Every day is normal. As if what you have is sin. You don't tell people about it. You don't call, you don't talk to your friends and say, this thing is right. Or you are not profitable. You murmur. And now you are even going to see, go to sin and come back. This is where you will learn. Any youth that you are not grateful for this holiness you have known. The holiness doctrine that you have come across, the holiness doctrine you have had, the holiness dressing you are dressing, the holiness lifestyle you are living, and you are not grateful for it to be known. Oh, God, thank you for locating me. You went back to sin. You went back to boyfriend business. You went back to lying. You went back to anger. You went back to masturbation. You went back to seductive dressing. You went back to, to evil thoughts. You went back to deceitful life. You will, you will be cast into outer darkness, hellfire. And you will be weeping and gushing of your teeth. You have had my, my testimony. When the demon was torturing me, I don't have anybody to hold, to quench my pain. It was my teeth. That is what the Bible says. You will do that. Oh, you will, your teeth, you will creep it like this. But the pain that will be passing in your body is like current. The torture of Satan for sin. You that you are playing with sin. You that you are playing with sin. You will be tormented. You will be tormented. You will be tormented night and day. Psalm 11. Quickly. For you to know that both Old Testament and New Testament. Psalm 11. Verse 6. Psalm 11. Verse 6. For you to know that both Old Testament and New Testament is talking about disobedience to the way they will learn. Upon the wicked, he shall rain near fire and bring stone, and an horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. All those disobedient youths that don't want to live holy, that want to use their body to commit sin, that want to go back to, the, to Egypt. I want to go back to this satanic world. 
this wicked war that we are preaching that you people should not love, that want to bring back those old lifestyle in you. Those days you have anger, those days you have lusting, those days you, you don't love, those days you, you started bringing it. This is where you will end. Don't think that you have missed heaven or you have missed hello. As long as you are still alive, if you are not careful, you will just slip into hellfire. You will slip into hellfire. Mark chapter 9, very fast. We are running up. Begin to make up your mind. I don't know how you have lived your life during this corona. I don't know the secret sin you have gone into. I don't know the hypocritical Christianity you are doing, as I call it, watermelon Christianity. Inside is red, outside is green. We don't know which true color you are. But Jesus, no. Don't allow yourself to be born in hell. Mark chapter 9. Turn with me from... But let me read from, let me read 29. And he said unto them, this kind came comfort by nothing, but by prayer. No, let me go to 40 something. I want a hymn. For 42, 43, 44, 45, I will just choose few. 44. Where their worm diet not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter out into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. This is where, do you want to go and suffer yourself? You don't know you have escaped. The truth that you have known, you have escaped. Oh, if you continue in this truth, in holiness and righteousness, you have escaped this place. Any day you die, Jesus come, you go to heaven. But if you start going back to the Egyptian life, if you start admiring the Egyptian property, all these Jezebelic nonsense thing that put you on their body, if you start thinking in your mind that is it true that this holiness is correct, if you start doubting in the faith, in the total truth of holiness, my sister, this is where you will end. Where the fire will not be quenched, you'll be burning forever, burning, burning. The worm that will be eating you will not die. The worm that will be eating you, the worm will not die. Everlasting torment. Everlasting torment. The, the scripture is too much for this, for, for torment, torture, hellfire. Everlasting torment. What will you do? What will you do? What shall it profit you? That sin that you are covering. What shall it profit you? But, um, look chapter 16, verse 23. Luke 16, verse 23. He said, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. He's talking about a rich man. He was not in a good place. He is a rich man on earth, but now, see where he is. He's, he was not in the AC room. So say, and he's lifted up his eye in a rich, in a rich place. AC was full with a good, good food in torment. He was rich on earth, but the riches was in sinful pleasure, sinful lifestyle, sinful getting the money, wicked lifestyle. And when he died, he did not go to heaven as a rich man to say, and let me go and continue with that rich. He went to a place where he has been in torment. He lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Oh, oh, oh. Just come on headache that will catch you from Monday to Tuesday. You know you will be crying. I'm taking Panadol. My head is tripping in me. Oh, my head. Oh, my head. That is only headache. Your, your period pain or your, your stomach pain or back pain, you'll be crying. My tummy is pain in me. Two days now, two hours now, my tummy is pain in me. You'll be crying. This one is not for an hour. This one is not for two hours. This one is not for one month. Hellfire torment is forever. Ever and ever. Ever and ever. For lying, for anger, for masturbation, for, sm for smoking, for drinking alcohol, for boyfriend, for lusting, for witchcraft practice, for naked dressing, for seductive dressing, for evil thoughts, for evil counsel, 
for watching pornography, for doing masturbation, forever and ever, for disobedience, haters of the world. Some of you don't want to hear all this again. When they put that, they did come and say, hey, it's too long, it's too long. Some of you to read bookies, and they, you, you are complaining, complaining to read Bible, complaining to listen to a message, complaining to study the word of God. I don't know how you say you love Jesus. You don't have time. God is watching you. I'm just telling you, refresh your mind that if you are not careful, you will not miss hell. If you are not careful, you will miss heaven, but you will not miss hell. Hell is so large. It's welcoming people every day. So when you are walking in this world, be conscious that any little thing I'll do, I'll fall and don't fall because appreciate where you are now. If you miss heaven, if blame yourself, if you miss heaven, that is the topic and I'm ending now. Mark it today that if God comes now, rapture take place now, you died now, judgments they come now, and your name is not found in the book of life, and you have been the only one member, or you backslide and leave, or you die as a remote member, or rapture meet as a remote member, going to chapter meeting, this, that, and then you did not go, you did not rapture, or you die, you did not make heaven, and judgment day, your name is not found in the book of life. Please check yourself and ask, who will I say, help me to miss heaven? What will I say? What did I do? Because it is just hardening of hearts to sin, because all the messages that need to be heard to save one soul, you have had it here. It's just that some people had this very hard thing. They love sin. They want to eat sin, sleep in sin. Some of you look out your face outside looking only, but inside is rotting with sin, with evil sin, with one sin or the other. And the thing that is paining God is that you are not bothered to get away that attitude, that bad behavior. You are not bothered to stop that sin. You are not bothered to confess it. You are still suppressing it, suppressing it because you are not ready for heaven. But I will tell you, you will cry. You will suffer. You will regret. And all of you hearing me here, youth, from the age of, of, let me say, six years, accountability, you, you, you are signed for your life. You will go and stand for joy. Your mommy will not stand for you. Your daddy will not stand for you. Your pastor will not stand for you. Sister Linda will not stand for you. Daddy Rika will not stand for you. Your coordinator will not stand. Even your friend, your husband will not stand for you. Your your wife to be will not stand for you. It's only you that will stand for yourself. And if you don't give your heart to this total truth and practice it, don't be do don't be here all the but be doer of the world. Don't be a preacher all the but be doer of the world. Some of you know how to preach to people. On dead people mock at them, say this one will not go to heaven. You have your own. Please, I beg the youth. I don't know when we'll see again. Maybe God can come now, or rapture will take place, or anything can happen because life is not our own. The owner of life can say, Take my life back, and you will just lie asleep. Some people will say good night and never wake up. So please, I am talking to you like a mother in the Lord and a sister and a friend. Don't play with salvation. Don't play with hell. Don't play with hell at all. That sin, anything that you know that you are doing that is sinful, don't play with it. Call for help. Call 911, as in America used to say. Something is happening, call 911. Call us. Call people to pray. Tell us, don't be ashamed. If I tell mommy, if I tell daddy, if I tell my, if you don't trust your coordinator, all that the leader, he is a father in holiness. If he's something to keep private and be pray for you, he will do it. Call us, we intercede for you, but don't allow that sin to take you. If you're a witch or a wizard, it is better you come and confess it. They will not expose you, neither the ministry will send you away. There are people that have come, they will pray for them and they are so uh, observing them how their life are going. The ones that they are removing is the one that they are hiding in their heart and God said that they want to damage the ministry, get them away. That's why some of them, they send them away. But there are some that are coming, they will come and confess. 
And when they come, they pray for them, put them on spiritual exercise. Nobody knows. You and I don't know. I'm talking now. Some of you say, who are they? You cannot, we cannot tell you because they came out genuinely. They have come to their savior. He cannot cast them away. So please don't allow that witchcraft to carry it to hell. Don't allow that sin to carry it to hell. Don't allow that, that attitude, that bad attitude to take it to hell. Anything you are facing, please, you to afford it more. Expose sin. Don't cover sin. If you know your friend that is doing sin, don't join them to do sin. Expose sin. Don't confess our sins. Blame yourself if you miss heaven. Please. you that know that truly there are some behavior that truly if i don't if this thing don't leave me i will not go to heaven you know there are some characteristics that i you are going to rededicate your life to christ again you are going to renew your covenant with god tell the lord mm -hmm. father because the lord will destroy you on the way as he destroyed the israeli when he was bringing the children of israel with all the signs and wonders he did for these people they do they disobey god you see how he killed them only few that went to the promised land mm -hmm. let me tell you in horror more here if you play with grace and mercy people will clear you away and as he clear you like this you will land in hell many coordinators that they are playing with holiness they are I hold them and they don't clear them. God has cleared them out. And some of you will not hear them again because they have cut off from grace, cut off from the source of source of, of holiness. You will start seeing some of them preaching against holiness because the, the source that was keeping them. Up. So pray and say, God, I want to rededicate my life to you. I want to renew my covenant. I will be sober. I will be serious. Lord, begin to re begin to rededicate yourself to Christ. Renew your covenant. Where you have went, where you have gone wrong in your heart, you tell the Lord to show you mercy. Tell the Lord to show you mercy. I pray and command. Share to them. Bless you. Share to them. But I'm in the name of Jesus. I come before the Lord to rededicate my life, Lord, before in my body. In the name of Jesus, follow him wherever I am. In the name of Jesus, I come to the Lord. I will rededicate my life. Lord, I
Put your hands on your heart and sing the song and tell the Lord to come into your life. Into my heart. Into my heart. Oh, me. Into my heart. Lord Jesus. Come in. Come in and stay, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. Welcome in your heart, into my heart, into my heart, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in and stay, come in to my eyes. Give your heart to Jesus. Tell the Lord to take over. Tell the Lord to take over your heart. Tell the Lord to take over your soul. Tell the Lord to take over your body. Tell the Lord to take over your spirit. Go into a new marriage with the Lord. Tell the Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Father, show me mercy. Lord, have mercy upon us. I start with you. We are going to pray for five minutes. We are going to pray against all the foxes of darkness in your life. Those that have anger, those that have gossip lip, those that have masturbation spirit, those that have fornication, those that have gone in different type of sin, into different, in different sins, who have gone into different sins, and you have done it and God is not happy with you. We are going to pray that God, as I have dedicated my life to you, all those powers that we want to come back to defy you, let those sick die in your life. Begin to open your mouth. Begin to destroy that sin in your life. That property of Satan that want to damn your soul in hell. Any sin you any I'm <laughs> 
Only you not to come up to standard of holiness. Any satanic hand, any witchcraft hand, every manipulation, oppressing your holiness, oppressing your faith, oppressing your strength, oppressing your spiritual life. to pray and say, God, worldliness will die in our emotions. In their life, the worldliness that make other youth to go to hell. Our youth will not possess it. Amen. The demon will not possess them. Amen. That worldliness will die in our youth. Amen. Open your mouth and kill worldliness in order. Kill it in the youth in the name of God. Every worldliness. Every worldliness. Every worldliness. we are going to pray Without you being sanctified, you will not make heaven. You have to be sanctified. When you are sanctified, you will be, you will have long suffering. You will have love, charity. You will, you will, you will have the fruit of the spirit. You will, you will be like Christ. Others will see Jesus in you. You will not be soon angry. You will not think of sex, of fornication. You will not think of masturbation. You will not watch pornography. You will not be a witch. You are going to tell the Lord, my father 
sanctify my heart. Give me the heart of flesh. Take away the heart of God. Papa, sanctify me. Sanctify me. Sanctify me. Sanctify me. in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to join two prayer points together. One, you are going to tell the Lord, Lord, keep my name in the book of life safe. One of the prayer points I used to pray, I said, God, even when Peter was rising and falling, but because you love Peter and you have a plan for Peter, you always pray for Peter. I said, Peter, the devil wants to steal you, but I pray for you. And I told the Lord, Lord, you are still the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And the devil is the same devil yesterday, today. And he's the one that is going to be ruling and when you will be judged, Satan. But God, I know when you pray for Peter and Peter, your prayer work for Peter, Peter make heaven. You are going to tell the Lord, God, pray for me that the devil will not save me. Amen. God, pray for me that the devil will not save me. Amen. Begin to pray and say, God, Jesus, pray for me that the Sustain
I need the blessing of God. Do you want to get your stay in abroad? Do you want your documents? Do you want to get married? Do you want to do you want to have a job? Do you want to finish your education? Have you been praying for for sanctification? I don't know what you have been praying for, but I want to tell you the Lord is here with us, the Lord is here in us, and the Lord has seen your commitment as you have read get your life to him and he's ready to make another covenant with you begin to tell the lord what you want the lord to do for you tell the lord to turn your story around tell the lord to walk to bless you tell the lord to sanctify you I am Jesus name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you for the word of God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for doing your miracle in our lives, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for convicting the younger ones in this ministry. Thank you for making them to know that everything they need to make heaven, you have given to us in all remote. Father, I pray that, Lord, you will make them to be sober. Make them to be vigilant. Make them to be strong. Make them to wrestle for their eternal life. So, Lord, Jesus, give them power to travel upon serpent and scorpion. Father, give them power to overcome sin in every level. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord. Father, help the youth of Horemo worldwide. That this youth, they will not go to hell. Amen. Father, we will rejoice in heaven forever in Jesus. Name, oh Lord. Father, Lord, many of them are passing through persecution, trials, and temptation. Because of the different countries and different families they come from. Many don't believe in holiness. Many are angry with that. But God, your grace and your strength is sufficient for us, O Lord. But that divine grace, O Lord, the grace that you give up to Paul, that making sins the day he come across Jesus, he never give up till the day they beheaded him and he entered heaven. He never give up. Papa. We pray for that grace to come upon the youth and they will never give up in holiness till they enter heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, Amen. they pray. I want to tread upon something and stop you. The power to be victorious. The power, Lord, that you have given unto man. So, Papa, sweet, Papa, give it unto this youth in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, those are rising and falling in sin. So then they will be holy tomorrow. They will go back to sin. But then that sin that have made clothes upon their body. I release fire upon that power. I destroy that sin connected to your life. I frustrate that sin in your life. I uproot it in your life. Because the Bible says whatever thing that is not planted by the Father shall be uprooted. I uproot that anger. I uproot that evil thought. I uproot that bad light. I uproot that worldliness. I uproot that love of phone. I uproot that love of money. I uproot masturbation. I uproot I put this appointment. I put oppression. I put evil to Jesus. I bless the life of Christ in your life. Let others see Jesus in you. From today, the life of Christ will be seen in you. You will be like Jesus. You will speak like Jesus. You will act like Jesus. You will give like Jesus. You will dress holy like a child of God. And you will they will go forever. We follow you in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. 
Father, bless them abundantly. Forward, cover with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let the blood of Jesus cover them. Because Amen. the Bible says, when I see the blood of a Passover, Amen. I cover your family, Amen. I cover your home, Amen. I cover your greatness and your coming. Anything that belongs to you, I cover it with the blood of Jesus. Amen. All your heart desire, I cover it with the blood of Jesus. Amen. All your prayer points, I cover it with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Your determination to make heaven, I cover it with the blood of Jesus. Satan will not see you in Jesus' name. I plant evil eyes to watch your progress in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, transform their life. The next day, the youth will come together. Lord, let there be spectacular miracle. Let there be instantaneous miracle. Let there be powerful testimony. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord. My Lord, do so much for mercy because they did one sin or the other. Father, Lord, I pray that God show them divine mercy. Amen. Let mercy locate them over. Amen. Let them feel the sweet breeze of Christ again in their life. Amen. Let them feel the presence of Jesus closer to them again. Amen. Those that they were seeing vision before, but they stop seeing vision. They stop hearing the voice of God before they enter into sin. Father, let them begin to hear the voice of God again. Amen. Let them begin to see vision again. Let them begin to see divine encounter, receive divine encounter again in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, Lord, I pray take their prayer life to another level. Amen. Take their fasting life to another level. Amen. Take their Study the word of God like, to another level. Amen. Give them divine knowledge, O oh Lord. Amen. Protect them and guide them. Fight their battle for them. Any one of them, Satan, are about to kill them, to frustrate them. Papa, delete their name from the book of Satan in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh Lord, cover them, O oh Lord. As we end the service, Father, we pray that Lord, you will continue with us. Lord, we cover us with your blood. Thank you for the you increase them. Make them fruitful. Make them to evangelize. Give them boldness. Make them to appreciate this holiness we have shown them. Make them to guide it preciously, jealously. Let them guide their salvation in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Amen. Give them power over temptation from today in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Father, bless the next a youth conference, Father, open doors for them. Give them money. Give Amen. them document. Give them open favor that Amen. all of them will come and glorify God in heaven in the company in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I leave them in your hand. I hand over them to you. Watch over them. Protect them. Guide them. Save them. Lord, if you are coming this month, this year, to rapture the world, remember them in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember them in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember their family in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for meeting them. Thank you for bringing them closer to you. Thank you for writing their name again in the book of life. Thank you, Lord, for bringing them closer. Thank you, Lord, for answering prayer. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you all. In the spirit of holiness and righteousness, heaven minded, let the Lord be with you. Keep being holy, rebuke sin, hate sin. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. The Lord heal any one of you that you are sick, healing over your body in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you all. Amen. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bless you, my bye. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816 902 3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe.
I believe you, Lord, cause you 